Hey, welcome to the second episode of Portrait Artist of the Year, done Shelly J style. I have nine names here, and I'm going to select one, and that's who I'm going to paint today. Uh, the list came from my YouTube subscriber channel list. Uh, my husband picked out ten names. I already did the first one, episode one. Uh, you got to check that out. Uh, so let's see who I'm going to paint today. Yeah, I'm going to be painting Happy D. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll play the explanation of how Portrait Artist of the Year works and how it compares to my version. And go ahead after that and watch episode one. You can see me paint Ten Hun. Sweet. Let's paint. Welcome to my channel, Shelly J. Cox and SJC Sport Couture. This is where art meets fashion. I've started my painting with a large grid. Then I placed a few of the important landmarks that would help keep my facial features in the right place, like the top of the eyebrows, the top lash line, uh, where the hairline uh, meets the face. I also marked the bottom of the nose and the center line for the lip. And I marked the chin. As I often do, I prepared my palette before I started painting. Um, I had mixed the lights, the middle values, and the dark values. Then I just began painting and I pick a spot to start. Today I started with the eyebrow and I build each brush stroke out from that first initial brush stroke. And that is known as a selective start method. I like to watch YouTube when I'm on the elliptical trainer. It's a great time for me to learn a new skill for Photoshop or find new channels to follow. This is when I stumbled across Happy D Artist. First I was attracted to the name. Then once on her channel, I was like, wow, now this is some cool art. I instantly loved her stylized faces and the way she incorporates dreamy other world effects around her figures. And her channel is very informative especially when it comes to maneuvering the world of an artist. She gets into marketing, websites, social media, and how she does her art. Really awesome stuff. So be sure to check out her channel, Happy D Artist. So I've finished painting both the eyes and I wanna make sure I capture her porcelain skin. She's got really beautiful light skin tone. I wanna make sure I get that. Um, here I'm checking the eye position with the proportion tool. I like to check that every now and then against my reference to make sure that the features are put in the right place. Uh, with portraiture, that is really important. I feel, especially with the eyes, there's some lead way with things like the nose, maybe a little bit with the mouth, but definitely uh, not with the eyes. You want to have those spot on. If you're liking uh, my play on Portrait Artist of the Year, let me know down in the comments. Uh, maybe I'll add on a few more. I was planning to do three, possibly four, but I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I might want to do more. Just let me know what you think. There's a lot of great colors in Happy Space. I've really had fun playing with There's some bits of yellow. We've got some purples in there, some salmons, some rose some taupe, yeah. Selective start is a nice painterly way of completing a portrait. I like to focus on my brush strokes and making sure I don't over blend them. I like leaving a bit of the stroke there and really focusing on the edges, making sure that the edges of things are soft, some are hard. Uh, you wanna have a nice combination of those hard and soft edges throughout your portrait. Okay, we're coming into the mouth. I typically do not like to paint people that are smiling with open teeth positions. However, I, I just felt that happy is so smiley and happy that it just wasn't gonna work otherwise. So the teeth had to be there. I do know that when you're painting teeth, they have to be exactly correct. 
there cannot be one line out of place, one shadow put in the wrong spot. I mean, it has to be right or it is going to throw your whole face off. So teeth can be extremely challenging. Well, I felt I was up to the challenge, obviously, so here we go. Teeth. The other thing I know about teeth is you do not paint them white. They usually cast color of lipstick or the skin tone, possibly the surroundings, whatever color top the person has on. Maybe there's some lighting that's catching. And they also have a good bit of shadow, so you've got to make sure that you're creating a 3D form on each tooth. So that's another part of the challenge. Another thing is, when you're painting teeth, you don't want to draw every single line, every single detail. You don't want it to look too detailed. You just need to leave some of the information to the imagination and let it fall away into shadow. It's good to be expressive with the lip color paint brush marks. You want them to be bold and ideally you want to paint them in as few brush strokes as possible. So her lip color is pretty bold and it's going to reflect onto her beautiful porcelain skin so I'm making sure that we get some of that reflective color down in the chin and around the upper lip. And also with the chin, I want to make sure that it stays soft and not too harsh. Okay, I've added some highlights to the bottom lip and now I'm pushing those shadows at the corner of the mouth even further. I really try to build up the darks. Once I have my mid-tones and my highlights established, it's easier to go back in and push those a little further. I like to get a little more contrast when possible too. If you're getting some value from the video, hit that thumbs up button for me. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming Portrait Artist of the Year video episodes. All right, time to add in some of that really dark hair around the face and then we'll really see how light or dark that the skin tone is gonna appear in the final painting. This may change some of the skin tones that we've put down already and I'll have to go back in and usually add a little bit more blush and cheek color, hit that up around the edges where the hair meets the face and put in a little more blush across the nose and yeah we'll see how that does. Alright I'm just going to stop talking for a few and let you guys watch me paint. Okay, the main part of the face is pretty much done. So now comes the fun part. I get to put in all of the Happy D elements. 
So you may wonder where I came up with the elements. I've watched a lot of her videos and I've seen a lot of her paintings. And from what I've watched, a lot of the elements that I'm putting in, you'll see repeated throughout many of her paintings. Um, I like to start with the image that I took from the YouTube channel. I freeze framed one of her videos. I pulled her out of the background and then added these elements into my reference material on Photoshop. And I added all the little cute elements of the background and I kind of let that guide me. Now I'm not a slave to this reference material as you'll see in the end. I do make quite a few changes as I start to paint and that's where I ended up. Yep, yeah, check it out. So I am by far not a floral painter. I don't know, I have very little patience to make a really detailed flower. So my flowers tend to be more impressionistic as you're seeing here. I, I just don't know how people have the patience to go in and uh, do that. <laughs> So this is a great time. I'm experimenting. I'm dragging my palette knife down the edge of her hair and it's creating this really cool texture. I liked it so I decided to do it on both sides. I'd never done that before. It just came up in this painting for the first time and I think it's pretty cool. Probably use it again somewhere. So the dominating colors in the painting that I'm doing here uh, came from watching her videos and looking at her painting gallery. I noticed three main colors stood out to me when I did that and it is pink, black, and red. So I knew putting the pink flowers on the top of her head was going to help tie in and really brighten up the pinks in her skin tone. And I knew I was going to be adding some more elements of pink throughout the painting as we go, so I thought it would work perfect, and it did. another happy D element. Uh, she often has fish in her paintings, koi fish, goldfish, different types of beautiful, um, very colorful, flowy fish and I wanted to have that but I didn't want to do it in color so I just wanted the black and, uh, black and white outline of that fish put in here and I think it's coming out really cool. So you're going to see I switch over to a Sharpie marker. I'm doing that because the ultra smooth panel boards that I'm painting on really lend themselves well to it. I've never painted on these boards until I started doing these portraits for the Portrait Artist of the Year videos that I'm currently making and it really is fun. I like having the ability to use these markers so I'll be uh, doing more of that. Alright, check out the red outline here around Happy's uh, head. I did that because she often will start her underpaintings with red colored pencils and I wanted to represent that. And then the other thing I'm adding in here are cherry blossom stems. So we've got the nice thick black cherry bro blossom branch and then little touches of pink throughout just to tie it all together. And you'll see I added some shooting stars in. That was just uh, my touch because I feel like uh, she is a shooting star. And here comes my favorite Happy D element. Her cat, I think his name's Boogerface. I hope I'm right on that. Uh, she paints her cats and her puppies into a lot of her paintings. I did notice the cat a little more often than the puppies, so here we are. Booger face. <laughs> if you 
watch any of uh, Happy's paintings of her pets, she'll tell you the cutest stories about them while she's painting. I just love them. Time for my comber brush. I pull that out whenever I'm painting fur. The separated sparse bristles at the tip of the brush work perfect. If you're painting fur, that's the brush you want to use on your top lightest layers. figures will often take on a mystical quality. I'm going to add some mermaid scales to Happy's skin here around the base of the neck and into the shoulder areas. I think a little mermaid touch will be just perfect. mermaid scales have an overall purplish pinkish tone quality to them so I'm going to start the base color of each scale with a deeper dark royal purple and then I'm going to put a little lighter purple and move that into the pink and I'm going to use highlights of light blue there were so many really cool elements to choose from. It was difficult narrowing them down. Uh, at one point I even toyed with putting a unicorn horn coming out of Happy's head because she's done that in some of her paintings. And then it's just there was so many to choose from. But I think the ones we ended up with here worked perfect. new element, mushrooms. I often see mushrooms throughout Happy's paintings. She'll put them in the background, in the figure's hair, all around. All different colors, all different sizes and shapes. So here we go, mushrooms. If you haven't seen Portrait Artists of the Year on YouTube, make sure you check that out. Uh, they are already into the semifinals, episode 9. That's where the last episode is that I saw. 
and I'm waiting for the next semifinal episode to come out soon. But make sure you check it out, Portrait Artist of the Year. All right, voila, Happy D, artist. Here you can see my reference photo that I put together from the freeze-framed YouTube picture that I took out of the background and added the elements from Happy's painting that I thought were gonna work well. And then I just started painting. And here's where we ended up. I'm loving it. So if you didn't see episode one of Portrait Artist of the Year where I painted Ten Hun from YouTube, uh, go ahead and check that out. And then make sure you check back because I can't wait to see who I get to paint on the next episode of Portrait Artist of the Year, done my way. So what is Portrait Artist of the Year? Let me explain. So it's an artist competition held in the UK. You have to live in the UK to enter. So the artists that are competing are turning in self-portraits and the self-portrait is judged and that's how you get entered into the competition if they select one of your self-portraits. If you're selected you go to London. They give you four hours to paint. The um, sitters are celebrity sitters. There are three that come in each episode and you do not know who you're going to get to paint. And then there's three judges on Portrait Artist of the Year. Professional and amateur artists finish painting the sitter. The artists put the paintings together side by side and then they pick the three top portraits and then from there they select the final winner of that episode or that heat as they call it. Uh, what's really interesting is the celebrity sitter gets to select one of the three paintings that are done of him uh, that he gets to keep and take home or she. So that's pretty fun. There's several heats, and then there's a semifinals, and then there's a final. And the grand prize of Portrait Artist of the Year is a $10,000 commission, and it will be hung in the National Portrait Gallery in London. And this year, the portrait sitter will be uh, music legend Nile Rogers. So that's pretty cool. So you work your way through the heats, you go through the semifinals, you go through the final, and then you paint this amazing guy, and your painting lives in the National Portrait Gallery in London. I think that's pretty cool. So that is the Portrait Artist of the Year. Okay, so Portrait Artist of the Year done Shelly J style is me entering the competition with my own self-portrait, which is right here behind me. Uh, it's called My Own Worst Enemy. So fast forward, I've been selected to be in, and so the celebrity sitter, how will we do that? Here's what I came up with. I'm going to have my husband select from my YouTube subscribed list of videos that I like. He's going to pick 10 and then put that in a hat and then each episode I will pull out of the hat who I'm going to paint so I won't know just like they don't know. So that'll be fun. So at the beginning of each episode we'll find out who I'm going to paint. And then I think, so the background of each sitter on the actual Portrait Artist of the Year has an interesting um, theme to it. it they'll pick like an old artist uh, master like Van Gogh or something and put some of his painting elements in the background of the sitter. So instead of that, since my sitter is going to be um, pulled from YouTube, I'm going to select some of the elements if they're an artist from their art or something from their channel that makes sense and put that in the background of my sitter. So that's it. Portrait Artist of the Year a la Shelley J style. Let's do it.